Well, I, I was born into a pretty creative family. My mom was a newspaper photographer and a trained painter, and my dad carved wood sculptures in his spare time. And, um, you know, so they built their house in the early 1950s, and my mom drew wine glasses on the backsplash in the kitchen, and my dad glued glass tiles to the wall, and that was him making his first mosaic. And he went on to make more mosaics on the walls, but quickly started making them in frames. And he made many mosaics a year for the rest of his life. And I was inspired by my parents and I studied art and then later graphic design. And I think that my time designing book covers was really when I developed my eye for composition and color. Years later, I returned home after my dad had a stroke and I saw his mosaic table sitting there. And I thought, we're gonna make a mosaic together. I'm gonna be his hands, and he's gonna sit next to me and guide me along. And we did that, and he appreciated that experience, and so did I. And we made a nice little mosaic of my house. So we decided to make another one. We started a mosaic of a group of kayakers. And, um, and halfway through, that's when he passed away. So I put the mosaic in the basement and I thought, that's that. But uh, about six years later, I pulled it out and I decided to finish it. And I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed working with the glass, even on my own. I hadn't expected that. And um, you know, my whole life I had been surrounded by mosaics and not for a second did I consider being a mosaic artist, but now I wanted to. So I went online and I researched mosaics and I saw so many beautiful pieces and I wanted to try all different kinds. And now, a dozen years later, and hundreds of mosaics later, I consider myself incredibly lucky because every day I'm still excited to make more mosaics. I like to make mosaics of the things in my world that I love. I love lakes and rivers and fish, and trees and chickens and herons, and even vegetables. Turns out I love people too. I've always been drawn to where the water meets the land and waves meets the sky. So I spend as much time as I can there, kayaking, fishing, or just sitting. And I'm also mesmerized by the reflecting diamonds on the surface of a lake, or the way light drapes across the tops of evergreens, or quivers through the leaves of a poplar tree in the wind. These are the little stories of the water and the land and the creatures that I want to share through my mosaics. As a child, I'd run down to the local dock and watch fishing boats come in with big salmon, and I'd stare at the stuffed trophy bass and perch and walleye hanging on the walls of the old taverns and bait shops. My fish mosaics are inspired by these memories. Over time, I realized my heron and owl mosaics were drawing from old naturalist paintings of the turn of the century, like Audubon's. I started playing with profiles of chickens, and very quickly they turned into these noble portraits, like those of old family dignitaries. Now, I'm exploring portraits of people, people in my world that inspire me, like friends and teachers and family, and I try to let the glass and light tell a moment of that person's story. And I'm curious to see where that's going to take me. Stained glass lets the light in. You can see it. It glows like a light bright. And I remember my whole life being fascinated by the way light and color interact. As a little kid, I would stare at these colored bottles lining a windowsill of our cottage and soak in the light that passed through them landing on the wall and feel comforted. I was intrigued by how light filled my colorful, transparent plastic toys from the 1970s. One of my stronger childhood memories is watching a rainbow trout flash past me in a canoe. The colors burst at me, distorted beneath the water. The beauty of that moment stunned me. I think about these memories and I want to try to create moments like them with glass, particularly stained glass, because of its translucence. It feels vibrant. 
even alive. The first time I visited a stained glass factory, I was in awe. I felt like I was in a candy store for the eyes, and it immediately brought back my childhood fascination with light and bright colors. Throughout all my work with stained glass, it became obvious how perfect it is for representing water, sun rays, and trees, but I was amazed at how it could look like wet fish scales or even fluffy chicken feathers. If a mosaic is gonna hang outside, I will grout it, but ordinarily, I would prefer not to. An ungrouted stained glass mosaic allows light to enter through the sides of the glass pieces and explode throughout the entire mosaic. I assumed I would eventually use other kinds of glass, other tessera, but so far I'm not done exploring stained glass. I love thinking that I'm painting with light when I work with it, and I'm still excited about that. I like to start with a photo of my subject. I tend to bring it into Photoshop, size it, crop it, reorganize the design a little or a lot. Next, I use the photo as a guide and draw the image in pencil onto the inside of a wooden frame. Then I paint over the sketch on the wood with watercolors, not to use as a color guide, but to unify the wood that can be seen between the glass pieces. So the sky section is painted blue and under the trees will be green. I really like how it holds each area together. To cut the glass, I use wheel nippers as well as a scoring knife with pliers. I use well bond glue to secure the glass to the wooden background. I mostly use the scoring knife to cut larger or intricate shapes, maybe a leaf shape or fish fins. For feathers, I often start with the scoring knife and make long narrow pieces that I nip into two inch curves. As I worked with both tools cutting the shapes, I noticed many of the shapes I was making looked like brush strokes. So I leaned into that idea, and now I use Van Gogh's paintings as an inspiration when placing the pieces. You can't blend the colored glass to make new colors like with paint, but you can make it blend in the eye when colors are placed next to each other, as the pointillist painters did. With stained glass, that can feel magical. <laughs> 